Hello, everyone. My name is Tarver, and I'm going to be your host this morning for Grow Zone. And we are so excited that you're joining us for this morning because we have so much fun planned for this morning. So first thing we want to do is recite our memory verse. So our memory verse is Ephesians 4, verses 4 through 6. And it says, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Wow, isn't that such a cool verse? And we want to do this, and then I'm going to do this week, is I'm going to write this down, and I want you to write this down or have a parent or somebody at your house write it down so that we can memorize that, so that we can remember it whenever we need to. Now, we're going to get ready to worship by singing, but before we do that, just like you do every week, I want to do our call to worship. And this is one way we're reminded of how much God loves us and why we sing the songs we do. So I'm going to say a line, and I want you to respond from the line that appears on the screen right after. Are you ready? I am. Here we go. Ready? Just one thing. Live worthy. The gospel. Jesus came, died, and rose again, making a way to God. Great job. Now, I want to invite you to sing with our worship team as we worship together. I'm sure you all sounded so great. 
I'm super excited because we have my friend Kara Bristow with us this morning to teach. I hope you're excited because I am so excited. Now, before our lesson, let's recite our Grow Zone Truths. Now, our Grow Zone Truths are statements from the Bible of what we believe about God. We recite them each week as a, another reminder of His love for all of us and what He wants us to tell others about Him. I'll say the first part, and you respond with what appears on the screen. God loves me and made me. Jesus died for my sins. Jesus is always with me. I am called by Jesus. God gives us joy. Great job. Now, let's pray for our teaching time and for care as we move into our time of teaching. Let's pray. God, we are so thankful that we can come this morning and that we can learn and sing together and that we can hear a word that you have for us. And I pray that we listen and that we remember everything that is taught this morning so that we can uh, grow to love you and memorize scripture and hear all the truths that you have for us. So I pray for Kara as she teaches, and we're so excited. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Okay, settle in for our time of teaching, and I'll see you after for our challenge and to practice our memory verse one more time. Hey everyone, good morning. It's me, Miss Kara, and I am so excited to be with you again today. And we have a very, very cool um, teaching that we're going to be walking through today, and it is based on the word worship. But before we get started, before I start talking about all of this cool stuff that we're going to learn, I'm going to give you some questions that I want you to think about while we learn. Okay, so here's our first question. What is worship? I don't know. We're going to find out. Okay, here's the second question. Why? Why do we worship? another great question okay so be thinking about that one as we as we learn today and the last question is how can we worship that's probably the best one of all is is how can we do that how can we learn how to worship okay so let's get started so you guys already know I've already said what we're going to learn about today the word is worship that's right good job I see you in the back you're paying attention. Okay, so what do you think about when you hear the word worship? What do you, what do you think about? Hmm. Who or what do we worship? Who do you think that we worship? What do you think that we worship? And why do you think that we worship God. Why do we even do that? Why? But here's the awesome, here's an awesome, awesome question that I, that I love is, did you know that you could worship anywhere? You can worship in the classroom that you're in right now. You can worship um, in the car. You can worship in the bath taking a little scrub, and, you know, you can worship that way right there. So you can worship anywhere, anywhere that you are. And you guys know what's up next. We're about to hear from our barnyard crew. So get ready, and let's have a listen. Trackers of Faith, featuring Duke and Luke, the Barn Brothers, Penny, the cold crack and tech savvy gal who is quick on her feet, Walker, the big-hearted handyman who uses his mechanical know-how to lend a helping hand. Jenny, the fun-loving biblical brains of the operation. And Milton, this super sassy swine has been fitted with the latest in animal communication technology. Join this crew of high-tech heroes as they sow truth, know truth, and grow truth. Directors of Faith! Thank you. 
Are you guys ready to go? I'm so ready to go. Go? You're leaving me? Yep. Walker, Luke, and I are headed to Jaden Duffy's community farm to help them plan a big worship event. You want to ride along? Penny and her mom are out for the day, and Duke is at the bean convention, or they'd all come with us. Let me get this straight. If I stay here, the barn will be completely quiet all day. Like no tractor motors or drills fixing shelves or Luke talking in his loud voice. Hey, I have to talk in loud voice because Duke has selective hearing. Anyway, if the barn's going to be completely quiet, count me out. I have a nap here with my name on it. All right, then. Jenny and Luke, let's head out. Hey guys, welcome back. We're so excited to be here to help. Thanks for the invite. What do you need us to do? Well, we need to start brainstorming what we might do at the worship event. Jaden and I were thinking that we could play music and sing worship songs, but we don't know how to play the instruments. Do you guys? Duke's a pretty good guitar player, but he couldn't make it out with us today. Rats, that was our best idea. But it doesn't really work without music. A lot of people think about singing when they think about worship, but worship is much bigger than that. We could do all kinds of things at the event. Really? Like what? What do you mean? Well, worship is basically any way we practice the presence of God, express our appreciation for Him, and experience His grace. So, for example, Walker, Duke, and I started a new practice where early in the morning we go out on the farm and read Psalm 23 together. We pray and offer ourselves and the farm to God to use however he sees fit. There's scripture, stillness, and prayer. It's worship, but there's no music. Yeah, and Penny's mom worships God by cooking. Oh, okay. So one of the guys who visits our farm a lot is really good at art. He draws a lot of stuff. One time he told me that he draws his prayers. Is that worship too? Yep, that's worship. So maybe at our worship event, we could set up different stations for all the different ways people want to worship. We could have some singing, but we could also have a place with supplies for artists to draw and a place with candles for people to sit and pray. And maybe even a place where people could pull weeds. Pull weeds? Why not? When I'm weeding the gardens, I'm really connected to God through his creation. He created the earth and all the plants in it. And in the Garden of Eden, he put Adam and Eve in charge of caring for it. So when I weed, I thank God for the gift of the earth and celebrate that he's in charge of making everything grow. I guess I just never realized that was worship. When you put it that way, absolutely. Yeah, that perspective might actually help me. I hate to weed. Oh yeah, sometimes the most boring everyday tasks like cleaning or weeding or cooking can become big opportunities for worship when we view them with gratefulness to God for what they mean. That he gives us a home, provides for us, and gives us bodies that move and minds that think, all for his glory. This is going to be a great worship event, but we better hurry and get set up. We're running out of time. I'll, I'll start start the back of the arm and set up the weed board. Awesome. That was so great. They are the best people ever. I love those guys. So here's our next question is, what is your favorite way to worship God? Hmm, that's a good question. What do you think is required in order to worship God? Are there, are there, are there certain rules? Are there certain things that we have to do to worship God? What do you think? So all of, all of these responses all of these answers are are great and they're they're all give god our attention our thanks and our praise all of these also include us coming together to worship okay so it can be at church it could be in our homes it can be on teams it could be at school it could be anywhere that you gather together god can use all of us to worship him. We can use all of our bodies and our creative minds to also worship him. So maybe you're kind of like Miss Kara and you know you might not have the best voice and you think that's the only way that you can worship, but it's not. Did you know that God can God can use 
the abilities that he's given you so that you can worship him. Like maybe you're a good painter or maybe um, you like to take photos. Those, all these different ways that you can, that God has gifted you, he says, that's how I want you to worship me is through what the gifts that I've given you to worship me. So I've already kind of given you a spoiler into the next question. So what are some other ways that you can worship God? Can you stand or sit? I don't know. Maybe you could do both. I think that you could probably do both. Can you be in a church or can you be just alone with God? I think that's also both. People have been worshiping God a very, very, very long time. Praising him is not a new thing. Let's listen to the Old Testament that tells us about how they worshiped. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. So... Let's listen to that. That that if we go back and we we hear that scripture again. Let's think about some of these questions, okay? Who should be singing about God? All the earth, right? Everybody. That's what that's what scripture says. How often should we tell others about how he saved us? What does it say? Day after day after day after day after day. So every day. Who are we supposed to tell about what he has done? Your mom? Your dad? Your dog? Your best friend? How about just everyone, right? Yes. So our next question is who should fear our God? Every other god or idol and sometimes you know when we go to games we go to sports teams um we go watch our favorite athletes play and we're just like whoop whoop there's my favorite player he's so awesome like and you're worshiping him kind of and you're like wow he did such a great job he wow let me just bow down before this guy hmm what do you think god's saying he said, okay, well, I made, I've made everything. All these idols that you might put in your, your life, that team or that game, all these things that you put above me. He said, I'm over, the, I'm over all of those things. And all of those things should fear me because he is God. What surrounds God? Honor and majesty what fills his dwelling place strength and joy that's right who should recognize the lord says all the other nations every single nation should recognize that god is lord over all and the last two questions are Who should be glad and who should rejoice? It says, the heavens will be glad 
and it says the earth will rejoice. So where are we? We're on earth, right? So what should we be doing? We should be rejoicing, worshiping, being excited about what God's doing in our lives, right? And worshiping him and rejoicing. That's right. And you know what? The heavens above us, they will be glad. That is, that's what sounds like a party to me, right? Yeah, I think so. So worship is about the followers of Jesus coming together and telling our story. That is why we read and remember parts of the Bible. Or we listen to a sermon. We gather together. We, we gather, well, we used to gather a lot more, but, you know, COVID, that happens. And, but, but we're still here together, you know, the best that we can be. So right here, right now, this is worship together. We are learning about God, and, and we are obeying him by reading his word together. We tell our stories to proclaim the good things that God has done and, and all the promises that he will do. So here's an interesting question. Who's with you when you get baptized or you take the Lord's Supper? Think about that. Who's with you? Tons of people, right? Your mom, your grandma, all your friends, they're coming to see you and they, they watch you get baptized and they're there for you and they say, hey, we want to be there. We want to walk with you, right? So it, it's corporate worship. Corporate's kind of a big word, right? But corporate just means a big gathering, right? So that's a place where we receive the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper, we do these things with other Jesus followers because they are reminders. They're big reminders that we are all a part of God's family. It's the way that we, we worship. When we, when we get baptized, that's a way that we worship God. And we say, hey, I am yours. I am a new creation. Right? And when we take the Lord's Supper, it's saying, hey, I remember I remember your body that was on a cross, and I remember the blood that you shed for me. And together, we can, we can hold each other to remember those things. All right. Have you ever been in a car that ran out of gas? Ooh, you know what? Miss Kara has been in a lot of cars that have run out of gas. Because Miss Kara is just not that responsible. She's getting there, okay? She's getting there. But um, I have been in a few incidents where I have ran out of gas, and my dad has been very upset with me, okay? So on a side note, put gas in your car, kids. When, when you get to drive, let's do that. Um, so I want you all to think about that. Think about... Oh, no, when, when, that, when that car starts to jumping and you're just like, oh, no, what's going on? And you look and you see, oh, well, it's my gas tank. I didn't put gas in my car. What's going to happen? You're going to have to pull, hopefully, on the side of the road and not block traffic, you know, but you're stuck, right? You're just kind of like, Ugh, like, oh, no. Well, during the weeks, Okay, we can kind of be like a car that uses gas. We're going to practices. We're going to school. We're, we're, we we got to get filled up somehow, right? Sometimes we, we take rests and, and we, we go to sleep at night, and that kind, of, that kind of helps. But, you know, our spiritual tanks need to be filled up too, right? When we, when our attitude when, when we feel like, you know, maybe, maybe you're sad, maybe you're upset about something, or maybe you just feel alone and you feel lonely sometimes. That's when you feel those things, maybe, maybe it's because you've run out of gas and you need God to come and fill that spiritual tank up right? And the way that he, he, he wants to do that is through worship. Worship is where we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to be in our midst, to speak to us through scripture. 
like we just read and, and lead us to worship God. And the Spirit, guess what? He will also give us strength to go and do and be who God has called us to be, to rejoice and be glad, right? To be those people who, who aren't whiny pants, but people who are uplifting, right? That's the kind of people that, that, that God has created us to be. So, do you have to be in church to worship? What do you think? No, you can be anywhere, right? But worship is kind of the most fun when you're with a bunch of other people who follow Jesus because you all are like, hey, we're all on the same team. Let's gather together, be together, right? He made us to enjoy worship and to enjoy worshiping together. And, and we should also pause and praise when God when we see his creation. So, do you have to be in church to worship God? No, you can be anywhere. I remember um, when I went on my first trip to the mountains in Colorado. And if you've ever been to the mountains in Colorado, and you're just not like your mouth is like, down to the floor because you're just like in awe of these huge mountains that you've never seen before because you live in Mississippi and you're just kind of driving along some flat plains, right? And then you go to this place and you're like, where have I been and why don't I live here? You know, this place is awesome. How, how is this possible? With God, he makes the Coolest, 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 coolest things. Think about stars. Think about planets. Think, think about things in nature that you love, that when you see them, you're just like, man, that is awesome. Well, you, well, you can be in nature and worship God. What, what are some things in nature that make you want to praise God? That's awesome. Another way that we can... Actively worship is by responding to God with our tithes and offerings. We offer God our thanks when we give back to him with, with, with our money, right? We, we give him money and we, we, we offer, you know, hey, this is for my allowance this week. And you know what, God? I wouldn't even have this if it weren't for you. So I want to give you, I want to give this to you and I want to give this to your church and you know, this is yours, not mine. Have you ever given God an offering? Have you ever done that? That's awesome. Sometimes we want to hold on to things, but you know what? Worship in invites us to admit our need for God. Worship invites us to let go of unforgiveness if we are worshiping God and praying for people who have hurt us, it's hard to stay mad at those people, right? So it's like when we want to hold on to our money or we want to hold on to our bad attitudes, we want to hold on to, you know, selfishness, all, all these things. We want to hold on to things that we want to hold on to, you know? Well, what does worship do? It, you let go, right? And you worship to God and you say, here are all those things. Because you are more important, God, than these things that I'm holding on to. So let's answer these questions that we talked about in the very beginning, okay? What is worship? Worship is practicing the presence of God daily, every day. Okay, why do we worship? Why do we do it? What do you think? Well, because he's the one true God. That's why. He's the only thing that needs our worship, or that, that, that deserves to be worshipped, is God. That's it, right? And then how can we worship? In any way, we express our appreciation for God and experience his grace. Okay?
So that can be anything. That's anything that God has gifted you with. It could be, hey, if you don't have the best voice like Miss Carrie, you can come, you can come hang out with me and we can just sing our hearts out. And you know who, who hears that and thinks that it's beautiful? God does. Our peers might not, but you know what? The only one that matters is God. Okay? So let's pray together. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and be with us as we worship God. We want to be filled by you so that we can be sent out as spirit-filled Jesus followers into the world. We worship and adore you, and we love you. And thank you so much for Grow Zone and for each one of our friends in our classes that we can be together and we can worship together today. Amen. What a great lesson. So I'm so excited and so much to learn because it is all so true. So I love the one thing that Kara reminded us that our worship isn't just about singing songs at church. I mean, of course, it's about the songs we sing at church, but it, we can sing anywhere. But it's also so much more than that. Our worship can be through our words and our actions and all the things we do as well. Worship is celebrating all that God has done for us and all the ways that he blesses us. Now, I'm going to remember that this week, and I really hope that you will as well. Now, before you go, how about we practice our memory verse one more time as we say it together? This is where I need some help. You going to say it with me? Here we go. It's Ephesians 4, verses 4 through 6, and it says, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Now be sure to practice that verse this week. You can say it to your family or your friends or anybody around you, or you can even just say it to God. Practice saying it out loud. I hope you have a great week, and we can't wait to see you next time.